Hello everyone and welcome back to Crayon Code. Today we're going to implement a doubly linked list together. Okay, so let's get started. As you can see, I wrote some code which I want to make work today by implementing a class called doubly linked list. And that's how we start actually. So, of course, we again need a constructor function. And as you can see in line 9 now, um, the constructor takes a present array which simply is there for being cloned into a linked list which means that we will simply call it items we will work with that later but for the constructor logic itself we need basically just two members uh, let's make it three one is the head and one is the tail of the linked list and of course we keep track of the length ah, not incrementing it we start with null of course okay so, first thing I want to implement before I can actually work with the constructor parameter is the push method. Because the push method allows us to put new items into the queue, which means that we have an, a method called push and it takes a value. So what happens now is that we need to manage our internal structure of the doubly linked list. What we anyways always need is an item and the item is of a certain structure, which means that we have the value itself and since it's a doubly linked list we need one pointer to the previous item and one pointer to the next item and now we need to cover some some management cases which means that in the beginning our list is empty so we do not have a head if we are not having a head things are actually quite simple which means that the head is our newly created item and same goes for the tail if we do not have a tail we simply set it to the item so and then first item always becomes head and tail at the same time but actually let, let's make it a little bit simpler because we go via the length which means that we just want to cover the case where the list is empty. So we just do it at that time. And after that, we are actually already done, at least for that case where the list is empty. If it's not, we have to do some data structural management, which means that um, the next item is always, or the new item is always the next item of the tail, which means that this.tail.next equals item and what we're anyways going to do is this.tail equals item ah so that one does not belong here so if our list is empty we simply set head and tail to the new item and if it's not we simply add it to the end of the list because by by adding by letting the current tail point to the next item and of course we also need to set the previous item on our new item which means that this one is the old tail so before updating the tail we first need to preserve a reference to the old tail via item.previous and that way it works that's already it at least for push now, I forgot one thing, um, of course, we need to increment length. And since this one is a little bit too late, because we are having an exit and return already here, something we should always do is do it at that point. So that way they incre increment the length and uh -huh, this is too early, so we need to do it um, once here yeah, and once there. Let's do it that way. Yeah, this looks good. Okay, so now I want to be able to access those items via a get method, which is called to. And uh, I think I'm going to rename it because get is a keyword in JavaScript. So let's simply call it get item. So, okay, perfect. So we make a new method and we get the index, which means that it's a zero based number identifying an item at a certain position. And something we can do just to already cover this 
if the index is greater or equal than the length, the given index is out of bounds. So that's something we can already check if index is equals or bigger than this dot length. So what are we going to do? Actually, we're going to return undefined. We could also um, throw an error, but that's a matter of taste. Sometimes you just want to have um, undefined and check for undefined if necessary, or sometimes you actually want your code to fail. Um, this is purely a matter of preference. So it's purely up to your taste. For the moment, I think I'm going to stick with um, return undefined. Okay, perfect. So that's not our, that's not everything we need to do. So we need to iterate to the exact position of the item, which means that we have, um, let's actually do it with a for loop. Yeah, that's actually, actually good because we start with zero and um, I must be smaller or equal than index because we also start with zero so we can make it small or equal. And of course, for each iteration, we need to increment I and now we need a, a variable which keeps track of the position where we actually are. And that's why we need, um, let's call it current. And it's this dot head. No, yeah, head, the first item. Exactly. And what we're going to do is current is always current dot next. And that way we advance in the list further and further until we reach the item. So, and now since we already start at this position, we cannot start at zero, but always already at one. And in the end, we simply return the actual value because remember, um, when we set up the item here, we have one, we have an, uh, an, a surrounding object where we have the previous and the next pointer and the actual value in a separate property, which means that when we actually want to get that, we need to return the content of the actual value property. So cool. And at this point, we're already able to do this. And now it gets a little bit interesting because we need to remove items. So, uh, you know what? Let's call this get at and remove it. And that way we have quite a consistent API. Perfect. So, and I think we're going to do um, something very similar here. And the thing is now that we also traverse through the list until we have reached the item in question, but we will not be returning the value, but we will be splicing uh, the, from the list. Because if you remove at, a, at an arbitrary position from a linked list, you link together the next pointer from the previous item to the next item of the item to be removed. And you do it analogously with the um, with the previous pointer. So which means that current is the item to be removed. And for instance, if we want to set, um, yeah, let's do it this way. Let's first get out the previous item of the current node. And only if this one is set, because it could also be that we want to remove the first item. So previous will not be set. And the previous items next pointer will be the current items next pointer. So we skip the current item. We take the next item of the one to be removed and set it as the next item of the previous one. And we're going to do it very in a very similar fashion with the um, next item. So we do it the very same way because it could also be that we are removing the last item. And this way, we are simply doing it that way that we set the previous pointer of the next item to the previous of the current item. So in that way, we already, we're actually already done. 
So now we have to cover, I think also for the topmost um, case, that we need to cover some, some edge cases, which could be that head has no successor, but I think we're good to go with this because if the next pointer of head is null, yeah, we, we are covered actually. That looks good. So just to remember that um, when you want to remove an item at a certain position, you traverse through the linked list until you have found the item to be removed. And from there on, you re rewire those items basically, because you take the previous item of the current item and from this perspective of the previous item, the next item becomes the next item of the one to be removed. And vice versa, it works for the previous pointer management because you take the next item of the current item and rewire its previous pointer to the actual one which is to be removed. Okay, and that's already it. Ah, no, wait, we forgot something. Yeah, we need to work with the constructor. And uh, yeah, we have still this one, and this one is actually quite simple because we just reuse the push method, which means that since items is optional, we check if it's actually one. And what would be cooler is if we actually also check if the given parameter is an array. And this way we can check if... Uh, let's quickly see if... Array dot is array already yields true for anything which is not given perfect so and then we can cover the other case because if items if we get a single item we just push it and if we get an array of items we also just push it which means that we use the for each method here and for each item we get we simply call push and that's actually it and for the single item yeah, actually we don't need that else if. Yeah, let's keep it because that way it's simpler. Um, we simply call push item. Okay, that's already it. Let's let's try to test this a little bit. And yeah, of course, at least it ran through without any error. But let's let's go through it with a breakpoint. Okay. So, actually that's already a critical case. Oh, I see, I forgot something. Length is not being managed for remove it. So, last thing we do here is we decrement length by one. Yeah, let's, let's start over. Okay, so we are getting an array of items and Let's set a breakpoint here. So list is empty. Head and tail are perfectly our new item. And of course, length is now one. So now it gets a little bit more interesting because now length is bigger than zero. So it's a truthy value, which means that we will bypass this if block. And now, the current item's previous item is the current tail. So you can see here that tail is A. So our previous item of the new item is also A. And you can see here in our new item value B, but it points to the previous item with value A. And same goes for the tail now, because our new tail is now the, the one with item B. And of course, let's increment length by one. All right, we do this the very same way again. Nothing spectacular here anymore. Perfect. Okay, so now of course push we already tested through our constructor. Let's go over it one more time. And now, yeah, that's gets interesting because wanna, what I want to get is C. I want to get C because C is zero, one, two is at the third position. So let's see. Okay, index is inside of the bounds, very good. And we start iterating at head. Perfect, head is A. And now we expect it to be 
B and now current is C and now I want it actually to stop. Perfect. So we are getting C as a value because it's at the third position. So we iterated twice through the for loop because we started at the first item, which is represented by i equals to zero. That's why we start here at one. Perfect. So we get C. And now I actually want undefined. Perfect, because 10 is bigger than um, the actual length, which should be four now, one, two, three, four, exactly. And now let's see if removing works because afterwards I want the list to be A, C, D. Let's see if that actually works. So we again iterate once through the for loop because yeah, B is the one we want to remove. We have the previous item is A, perfect. So now we make the item A not point to B anymore, but to C. And you can see the next item of the current is C. So our previous item points now from A to C. And the next item of the current is then being pointing to A. Perfect. So, and of course now length is a little bit shorter. Great. Worked. Now, um, to cover the edge cases, um, let's try something else. We want to remove at zero or and we want to remove at list dot length minus one. So let's see if that actually works. Yeah, some old breakpoints. So, oh, there's actually something else we could check, but let's do that a little bit later. Perfect. So we just take the first item and previous is not set on the first item and therefore we are not doing that. And for the same, we take the next item and the next item's previous value will be null because we are removing the first item and the first item's previous value is always null. So, and now I think we forgot something. Yeah, because we are not managing head and tail at the, appropriately here. So let's get this covered. Okay, so when do we need to actually manage the head? Um, it's basically if the given index that needs to be deleted is zero, so if we're deleting the first element, the head moves one position forward, which means that head becomes next. Because this one is the first item, this one is being removed, so the new head is the next item of the one to be removed. And vice versa, if the index is this dot length minus one, so if we're going to remove that, we need to reassign the tail and this is the previous item. Perfect. Exactly. And if we are removing the last item from the queue, previous will also be null. So we do not have a tail anymore. Very nice. So I think this should work. Let's give it a try. So, okay, we have the first item. Previous is not being set. So we are not rewiring those pine pointers. And now we take that one. We are rewiring that. So now we have actually already that edge case because head is still pointing to A and now we want to point it to C because we, rem we, are, because we removed uh, B here at this point already. So our new head is C. Perfect. Very good. And now we want to remove the last item and check the pointer management here. So we are traversing to the very end. And yeah, of course we're rewiring previous item. We're not rewiring the, the next item because it's the last one to be removed. And yeah, perfect because our new tail is C. Perfect. 
So, okay, since we have four items, let's give it one more go. Because we put in four items, now we're removing four items. I want to see that it actually works, that when clearing out the list entirely, that length at the end will still be zero and of course that the rewiring will also work so it's actually perfect because there is no next item anymore so our head becomes null as well as our tail becomes null perfect and length afterwards will be zero very nice and that's already it Stay tuned for the next episode because we are going to implement an iterator pattern which is quite nice to use with linked list.